In Bayonetta 1, Gamora is one of her most basic summons. While I haven't counted, I've heard on good authority that she uses it the most to finish off the most enemies. Naturally, it is the first one she uses in the second game. However, it goes horribly awry. After that, its appearances are limited, and I believe that they follow a specific pattern that hints at a deeper symbolic meaning to the creature. I will look at each one of them in turn, starting with the first. At the start of the second game, Bayonetta seems happy, healthy. She's settled down into a relationship with Jean. Okay, and aside here, I realize this is actually a surprisingly contentious point, so uh, I'll handle that at another time, just consider that a future video topic. For now, let's just work on the assumption that they are a couple, okay? However, there seems to be an unspoken source of tension between them. They're oddly standoffish from each other, despite living in the same house. Even when the battle starts, they don't work together very much. They literally fight on different planes. When they do work together to defeat a belief, this version's basic mini-boss, equivalent to the Beloved from the first game, Bayonetta summons Gamora to get the kill. It then goes berserk, attacking her and causing John to sacrifice herself to save Bayonetta's life. This kicks off the real plot of the game, as Bayonetta journeys into hell to rescue her lover, Jean. The key to understanding the meaning of Gamora in this scene is what Enzo is talking about. about he it. says, And what's this Ceresa shit? You're about as sweet as my Nona's grappa, you know that? Some witch with amnesia goes around calling herself a weapon, and it turns out she really got stuck with a kid's nickname. That shit's rich, I tell you what! There are two very important points there. One, Bayonetta's parents, who gave her the name Ceresa. And two, the fact that her chosen name is that of a weapon. Stick a pin in that one. We're gonna come back to it. The simple version is that Gamora represents the anxieties Bayonetta feels about her relationship with Jean. It is the forces that are tearing them apart, made literal, in that it literally tries to tear them apart. Gamora isn't seen again until late in the game, after rescuing Jean's soul from hell. Gamora appears to menace Bayonetta, implying that whatever was causing the problem is not resolved by rescuing Jean. It still exists, it's still a threat. And that threat is related to her father. See, at this point she is chasing down a masked lumen sage, who is kind of not so secretly her father. She probably knows this, but he has no idea because this is her father as a young man. Now, let's pick up that pin. At this point in the game, she believes that she is a weapon. As the lore documents in the original game state, a tyrant of a man, motivated purely by self-interest, who 500 years ago incited the witch hunts, annihilating not only the Umbra witches, but also his fellow sages. Named after the Norse god of light, Baldur showed promise in becoming a powerful Lumen sage. However, he broke these clans one unbreakable tenet of faith, consorting with an Umbra witch, begetting a child. It was all a ruse to take possession of the eyes of the world, the overseers of history that had previously been equally divided among the clans. Vigrid Chronicles, final chapter, Avalanada. This is framed review of both herself and her family, her mother as an innocent victim, her father as a wicked seducer, and herself as the weapon of her own clan's destruction. Bayonetta fears that she can't be in a loving relationship when her very existence is predicated on deception and has caused so much suffering in the world. How can a weapon love? This is something she needs to resolve before she can go back to Jean. And to do that, she must fight her father. 
But he's not the monster she believes him to be. He's not the power-mad tyrant that she fought in the first game. He's a young man, madly in love, and driven by grief and revenge, the same thing that drives her. Bayonetta then gets pulled back in time to meet her mother, which leads us to the third appearance of Gamora. After being chased through the caverns by a very powerful beloved, which I will note again, is analogous to the belief that appeared at the beginning of the game, Bayonetta and her mother Rosa finish it off by wishboning it. Bayonetta uses Labolus. Labolus became her default summon after Gamora was no longer reliable. She even used it to finish off the Berserk Gamora at the start of the game. Meanwhile, Rosa uses Gamora. These two being used together represents a sort of reconciliation. By meeting her mother, Bayonetta is starting to come to terms with her past. Her father actually loved her mother. He tried to save her, and all of the bad actions that followed were because of his grief. Bayonetta meets him again moments after her mother's death. She is able to direct his fury in the right direction this time and together they travel forward to the future to defeat the real cause of their loved one's deaths. Father and daughter come together to defeat Aesir, and after his defeat we see the fourth and final appearance of Gamora. Baldur and Bayonetta work together to summon Omnia, who drop kicks Aesir into the stratosphere knocking the soul right out of his body. It hurtles through the air towards the waiting jaws of Gamora, this time summoned by Jean. This was probably an intentional action on Jean's part. Summoning Gamora is a way of saying, I forgive you. It's not your fault. I understand. In the final scene, they appear to have reconciled. They're shopping together. They're joking and laughing. There's none of the awkwardness that we saw in the opening scene. And when the fight starts, they're fighting side by side, back to back. They're no longer on different planes. So what ultimately does Gamora represent? I believe that it represents Bayonetta's relationship to her parents. She sees her mother as a victim and her father as a villain but she comes to realize the truth is a lot more complex. Her father was a good man who made some bad decisions. Her mother was a hero. And despite looking almost exactly like her mother, she actually takes more after her father. But history doesn't have to repeat itself. Together with Jean, they can forge a brighter future. Labellus's epithet is destroyer of fates and she has destroyed her fate. And in the process, Gamora has made good on its own epithet, Devourer of the Divine. Looking at Gamora's lore, we can see it's a fierce... Johnson Forest. That sounds familiar, but I don't know where. Where have I heard of Johnson Forest before? I'm going to just Google that real quick. I'm keyboard and mouse. My computer's set up strange. Trotsky? What the fuck does Trotsky have to do with Bayonetta? Well, I, 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 in the video, in the video, it's over, over. Thank you for watching this video. It took a lot longer than I thought it would. It went through several drafts. Uh, hopefully by doing smaller things, I can get them out faster. Um... You should be seeing Patreon subscribers right now. I've changed my subscriber thing a little bit, so now just 
anybody who subscribes get their name up here. So um, I hope I've talked for long enough to make this work. So uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, give me money. Otherwise, my curse shall fall upon you.